On this episode of Motoring Box, we are going wide with my BA Falcon XR6 Turbo. This episode of Motoring Box is proudly supported by Haltech. Unlock the power. Welcome back to Motoring Box, I'm Sean McKellar. This is my 2004 BA Falcon XR6 Turbo, which we are nearing the end of our little build or bolt-on series journey. Following on from our aftermarket Haltech ECU installation, which if you want to check out, I'll put a link up in the corner here to the video where I installed it, it actually opens up some additional opportunities for extra sensors, upping your fuel injectors, which we did a couple of weeks ago, and being able to update the information in this ECU and still have the engine run on a base tune. And when you purchase a Haltech Elite Pro plug-in for your Barra Turbo, there's actually an additional option where you can actually buy it with a wideband O2 sensor kit. And that's actually what I did when I purchased this ECU. And what that actually includes is a Bosch wideband O2 sensor, all of the additional wiring connectors, um, installation instructions, and basically everything you should need to actually get it installed and get it up and running. So what actually is a wideband O2 sensor? Well, I don't know a heck of a lot about them, but I will leave a link up in the corner here to an awesome video which Haltech actually published very recently on their YouTube channel. That'll tell you absolutely everything you need to know about it. But if you just want a basic rundown, the O2 sensor found in these engines is actually called a narrowband sensor. And what that means is engines in general love to run at a particular air fuel ratio and it's typically 14.7 is to one. For every 14.7 units of air, there is one unit of fuel. I believe with the stock standard O2 sensor, the narrowband sensor, it can only detect whether the engine is running too rich or too lean. So too much fuel or not enough fuel. And by reading that sort of too rich, too lean reading, it can kind of judge and work out roughly where it needs to be. But a wideband O2 sensor, as the name suggests, actually can get a proper, more accurate reading of what exactly the air fuel ratio is at any given time. And because we are running this Haltech Elite Pro plugin, we can actually install this O2 sensor and connect it via the auxiliary port on this ECU. So rather conveniently, Haltech have provided the little wiring harness for it. So this end plugs into the connector on the O2 sensor. And then this end is basically just got the wires with their little connectors hanging out. But what that allows us to do is use this included AMP connector, which Haltech packaged in with this Pro plug-in ECU. And you can basically remove some of the little connector caps on the back here, uh, wire this thing up as per the wiring diagram which is included, lock the connector off so that these wires are then housed within it and they can't pull out. And then this thing basically connects to the underside of this ECU. So really that should be all there is to it. We simply need to unbolt the original narrowband O2 sensor, install this one, run the wiring across the top of the firewall, plug it into the ECU, change a couple of settings, and the engine should run. At least that's how it is in theory. So let's see if it actually happens. Now in reality guys, this whole uh, build is a little bit ass about face. If you remember, I actually installed a brand new exhaust on this car a couple of weeks back and ideally that would have been the perfect time to get uh, this O2 sensor installed because of course we have this stock crossover piece running over the top of the engine and it is definitely going to be in the way. So we had all of this stuff removed back then. In a perfect world we would have done that installation at that time but uh, I didn't actually have the Haltech installed back then either so we couldn't have run it even if we wanted to. So yeah, in a perfect world, I probably could have done the Haltech first, but I wanted to sort of build up to that a little bit. So it's all for the drama, it's all for, for the content really. So yeah, it is uh, causing a little bit of extra work, but luckily now that these two pipes are out of the way, we just need to get that heat shield off there, which is a couple of bolts, pretty simple. And at this point, I'd like to introduce you to some new weapons in the motoring box arsenal. I've always avoided electric tools, but I've heard some really awesome things about Ryobi products. So I actually went out to Bunnings and I bought this impact wrench and I also bought a ratchet wrench as well. This thing in particular is really handy for getting into some really tight little spots. So for example, on one of the exhaust manifold bolts here, we can just whack this thing on and get it straight out. 
So this thing in particular is going to save me a lot of time in the garage, I reckon. And even though I'm not the biggest fan of battery powered tools in general, for the price, I don't think you can really beat it. So this ratchet wrench, I think was 159 just for the tool itself, not the battery. And then for the uh, impact wrench, I bought this in a sort of starter kit, which came with a one and a half amp hour battery and also a five amp battery as well. So that kit I think was 299, comes with a carry bag and a charger as well. But um, yeah, for not a lot of money, I think these tools are gonna come in very handy. So Ryobi are not a sponsor of the channel. I bought this full retail from Bunnings. But yeah, for the price, uh, I think they're gonna come in handy and it'll definitely save me a lot of time down here when I'm filming these videos. So yeah, thought I'd uh, bring you guys up to speed. And you know, hand tools are always going to have a place, especially when you need to talk things up. But when you're talking about getting a bolt out really quick, it doesn't really get much quicker than that. A little investment in the channel. And of course, uh, none of this would be possible without uh, you guys watching, but also my Patreon and also my YouTube channel members too are all supporting me and uh, yeah, helping stuff like this actually become a reality. So here's a look at our Venom dump pipe. So this is of course, was installed just a couple of weeks ago. And um, you can see our little O2 sensor down the bottom here. Uh, access is a little bit tight, so hopefully you can see. But from memory, the size of it is 16 mil. So you're gonna need a 16 mil spanner. This one shouldn't be too hard to get off just because it was installed fairly recently, but if you're replacing your car's stock O2 sensor in a stock dump pipe, you're gonna need a lot of WD-40 just to get it all freed up and uh, get it out of there. As long time viewers would know, I've actually lost my 16 mil spanner and uh, I haven't replaced it yet. So <laughs> we're still uh, limited to our little shifter here. So yeah, I'll give it a shout out to Scotty from Street Machine. He's a man after my own heart. Loves himself a good shifter and, and look in the right hands, done up tight, it'll do the trick. Yeah. So luckily it was not done up tight and we just got it. try and, sorry I'll be blocking your vision here guys, but I'm just screwing this sensor out. Probably need to unplug the other end of it, which lives down here under the steering column, but at least it is a straight six engine and there is space down here. So you gotta count your blessings when you can. So there's your little connector. So that's stock standard connector. We're not gonna be using that anymore. So I'm gonna to have to just put it up here for now, but I'll have to tie it out of the way somewhere neat. And now we can get our narrow band O2 sensor unscrewed. Okay, so here's a look at our stock narrow band O2 sensor. It is looking a little bit sooty. This car was running a bit rich uh, due to my own fault <laughs> with misconfiguring my new 1000cc injectors. But here's a comparison to our brand new Bosch Jobby. From the outside, it is looking about the same. Now this narrow band one that's in my car actually doesn't seem to have a brand on it. So it's probably a no name. But uh, yeah, this one does have, you probably can't see it, but it does have some Bosch. Yeah, there you go, it has the Bosch label, has the part number there as well. As I mentioned, it does have a different connector on the end, but this will splice into the uh, wiring harness that Haltech provided, which will then go back to our Haltech Pro plugin. So it should be as simple as screwing this thing in, running the wiring harness across, and uh, the rest of it is the Haltech uh, ESP configuration. So yeah, let's see how we go. All right, so we've got the wiring running across the top of the engine bay here, and of course got a zip tied running along with the uh, ECU loom here as well. So we've got the other end here with our six different colored wires. Basically all we need to do is refer to our little handy uh, auxiliary wiring diagram. So it should be fairly simple. There's six different colored wires from 18 to 23. You see this little white tab here. You basically just get a flat blade and you push it down. That'll unlock the connector and then basically we just need to feed these six wires into it in the correct order. So pin 18 is the one here on the left, that is a grey. So yeah, they feed in fairly easily and you basically just push them through until you can see it. You know, wiring doesn't have to be difficult. 
it does scare a lot of people off, but Haltech have really gone out of their way to make this as painless as possible. So literally any old idiot can do it, including me. So they're set in about a mil or a mil and a half. So make sure they're all the way through and then you can just get another flat bladed screwdriver and then push these two tabs back in. So that basically locks the connector off. So I could actually plug this in without removing the three existing connectors, but I want to show you guys what I'm doing. So I'm going to quickly unclip the three of those. So here's the underside of our Haltech Pro plugin. Here's the auxiliary connector. The really, I think the neatest way is just to plug this in and then when I turn the ECU over, I can help route some of the cabling where it needs to go. But uh, it's pretty much in the right spot anyway. It's going to come in here on the right side. So, so long as it's on the right side of this main connector, it should all be sweet. Cool. All the connectors are reconnected. So we can drop our three bolts back in. So the physical installation is now complete. But this is where the digital installation begins. So let's get hooked in and we'll go from there. All right, so we're back in the car. I've got the car powered on. I've got the laptop powered on. We're connecting to our Haltech Pro plugin using the Haltech ESP software. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed this all goes well. So we are disconnected from the ECU. We will go online right now. It's going to connect to our Haltech Pro plugin. It's going to download all the parameters, all of the mapping and information that's stored in that ECU, the way it's been configured by myself so far. Okay, so we are connected. We're just finishing up reading some of the settings off the ECU. Everything's populating down the left side there. So all I have to do in here is delete the narrowband sensor, add the wideband 021 sensor option. Then in the 02 control tab, we add the bank one wideband overall. Hit apply, hit OK, restart the ECU just to make sure. Zero DTC error codes looking good. So uh, yeah, hopefully that'll be good to go. So we do have a reading there on the wideband 02 sensor number one. So if we start this thing up, hopefully we'll start to see it do its thing. I'm not sure what we're going to see because I don't really know much about it, but let's turn the engine on and have a go. So far so good, sounds pretty happy. There is a little bit of squeal from the belt, the uh, drive belt on the front of the engine because it's brand new. So the car's only done a kilometer or two since that was fitted. We're picking up a signal from the wideband 02. Looks like it's slowly dialing in to around one. The car is running pretty good. I imagine it would take a bit of driving to sort of learn things a little bit. And of course it needs to be tuned properly as well. So yeah, I imagine that's something which is going to sort of dial in a little bit with time. And uh, yeah, getting the car tuned, of course, is going to be the last piece of the puzzle. So look, I think that's fantastic. We're done in here. So yeah, that's about it, guys. Uh, I will eventually take this car out for a drive because there are a few extra things which need to be done to it before it can be dyno tuned. I do have a new center bearing that needs to be installed. I'm not going to do that myself, but hopefully we're going to find an expert to check that out for us, bring you guys along for the ride. But uh, yeah, a few more things we need to do, but at least we'll get this car out on the road in the meantime. Make sure it's driving right. We won't be able to get it on boost or anything, but uh, yeah, let's finish this thing up. We're all done. <laughs>